What's up, sweetie pies? My name is Kagan Lady, and welcome to part 12 of our UK Spirits. If this is your first time watching one of my videos and you see more content when arrived, then please click on the subscribe button below and click on the little bell that will let you know we we'll upload new videos. Well, in the last part, we finished our beach filler episode and we did level 5. So now we're going into level 6 and I have no idea what's going to happen in this episode because we just did our big event and we just had our vacation, so... I'm not actually sure what's going to be happening here. But I'm really excited to see what's going to happen in this part. So I'm going to get started, shall we? Okay, let's see what's going to happen this time. Hit the lever. That's what the name of it is. Okay, so... I'm guessing it has to do with luck. I mean, what else would it be if he hit the lever? Like a casino. So for what is going to happen this episode? Here it is. Level 6, hit the lever. Okay, what's going to happen this time? Here we are again. It is the future of 20... And my dream has come true. Okay, let's be honest. If you asked me two months ago if my dream involved being the event coordinator at a video arcade, I would just looked at you funny. Even now, it sounds ridiculous. It's true. I'm here. I'm successful. I'm happy. And I got a raise and a promotion. And this is my dream. Well, my dream is still at the prize counter. Ever since the Funplex arrived, business has been booming. Funplex is packed with players. Day in and out, kids, teens, college crowd, the nostalgic ones looking for old games to remember. I th I've run three events so far. We start rotating our games out of storage into play to keep things fresh. The high scoreboards are constantly shifting. In fact, things are going so well that Gavin's thinking of maybe sec looking into a second location. Now that is good. It's opening a chain, but this will always be home. Seeing smiles on coworkers and gamers alike, watching my friends laugh and playing good spirits, that's me work working for me and it's bringing me joy, in turn. I won't argue why. In fact, I barely understood why. I I'm happy. I'm better than I've been years going with the flow. Going with the flow never brought me this enjoyment. But I say, I soundly broke in the family curse. I Maybe everything doesn't have to fall apart under me. Maybe I can just be happy. Maybe this is where I'm meant to be. Sign here, please. Huh? Yeah, what in the world? A bicycle messenger nudges a slim envelope my way, trying to get my attention. I snap on my happy little trance immediately. Uh, right. No problem. But first, is this for me or is this for the Funplex? Because that's Gavin's territory. After drawing my signature, he drops the envelope and heads out the door. No time for mopey or a round of pinball, it seems. Deliveries to make. Curious to open up. Katie Lady, you are cordially invited to... to dine and discuss business matters at Deco's Palace with CEO Deco Nami. What the heck? Why am I invited to talk to the CEO? Meeting time will be at 7 in the evening sharp. You may bring a guest of your choosing. Well, for like business reasons, it has to be Gavin. Free Royal Value Swipe card available before joining at games prior to meeting. What? I read through this several times, trying to look through all the curly cues and swirls and swishes. Although that doesn't clear my confusion about the whole thing. Soon, Francie looks up from her knitting, curious about the letter as well. Although she seems to have an idea what it says. I suppose it's about that time, isn't it? Huh? Oh dear. Time for that fellow to make another time by wooing me. Double huh? Rather at wooing my beloved Funplex. So he's trying to take over Funplex for his little um, business? Let me guess. Deco Nami at Deco's Palace sent you a fancy invitation with all sorts of fancy writing. That's accurate, yes. It's not the first time. He invited my dear Frederick in 1880 uh, to talk about selling the Funplex. And we turned it down flat. But why is he sending me a dang invitation? I'm not in charge of anything. But then in 1980, he, when, my, when game home consoles were poised to take back the arcade crowd, he suggested we sell. We turned him down. Seriously, he suggested that you sell? Good. Turned him down flat. Now it's 20 and he's at it again. As a gentleman would know when to quit, he's got a tendency, and I can't not follow him for that. 
But yeah, why is he sending it to me? I'm not in charge of it. Why would a big time arcade operator like De Deco Nami care about us that much? We're a small time. Not, no offense. Come now, if anyone should be offended, it's you calling yourself small time. Katie dear, you put in so much work to make my little arcade sore. I bet that's why he's knocking on our door again. We're thriving and that's what lured him back in. Because we're getting so much business than before. Like Gure cheese in the mouse trap. So wait, are we the cheese or the trap? My, my. That depends how clever you are, my dear. Right, so I'm the cheese, although I prefer to be a nice mozzarella. Cheese types aside, do you want me to ignore the invite then? Oh heavens no. Contrary to what people say about the fellow, he's very much of a man of his word. I'll always accept his invitation, always hear him out. It's only fair and proper, but he might try to do something. That's why I don't trust this guy. I thought he was like the RK scene's greatest evildoer. Let be that's a grand house, no? Plenty of rumors about his questionable methods are bound, but that's all they are. Rumors. Politeness should be met with politeness. That's how you conduct proper business, and that's what the Funplex is all about. Francie moves a right from her seat near the ticket desk, but pauses, leaning heavily on the glass countertop while looking strained. That is not a good sign. Are you okay, Francie? I move to help, but she waves me away and sits back down. Oh, don't worry about little old me. I just stood up too quickly, that's all. Just out of breath. Yeah, but that's definitely worrying if you're out of breath from standing up. But, Katie, that'd be best if you go in my stead. Me? Let's be serious now. These old bones are just as bright as they once were. And I think you have a good time there. Well, an interesting time at any rate. What should I say? Um, uh, you can count on me, I'll... Shouldn't Gavin go? You outranks me. Well, he invited me, so I guess I, I have to be polite. Say no more. I'd be happy to represent the Funplex with dignity. Good, good. But remember, offer only as much as respect that you're given. If he should be uncouth, yeah, my permission should be uncouth as well. Thank you. There are many exploiters and users in this industry, and undoubtedly Dakonami ranks in number. So small if he smiles. But use caution. So, go there and turn him down. Got it. The slowness of response is a bit concerning. I trust you make the right decision for everyone. Which is not to sell the fun plugs, right? Well, I don't feel that's my call to make anymore, dear. Maybe you haven't noticed, but I, I spend most of my time at yeah. home these days. Or napping. Or napping at home. <laughs> Funplex isn't really about me. Not anymore. It's so much more than Francine's arcade Funplex yeah. now. It's about you. It's about your co-workers. It's about all our regulars. You've made me realize that. And That's I'm more thankful. like um, selling their own dreams. But this is a dream as well as mine. You're the one that started this place, Francine. He had a dream of a place where people have fun, relax, and make friends. I feel like even the entertaining idea of selling it is, well, like, it feels wrong. Disrespectful of you and your dream. Oh, you're such a peach, dear. But times are always changing. I'm an old fuddy-duddy, stuck in her ways. Maybe the time has changed how the funplex does change. We're almost back in the heyday of 19, uh, thanks to the changes you made. So I won't say you can't decide if you sell. If a change you think we need, do it. Please co keep an open mind. There's something really going on here if she's telling me to sell if I can. Francie sighs deeply, looking more tired than usual. It's only an afternoon I'm already worn out. Haven't done anything but see her knit all day. Knitting does take a lot of concentration. That's not nothing. If you're feeling poop, you could take a few days off, go home and get some rest. All the same, I'd rather come here for work tomorrow, even if there's a little work for me to do. I love being here. This is my true home. And yet you want to keep an open mind about this deal? Like I've told you, life can be a difficult series of trade-offs. What I want and what it should be are often different things. Yeah. I'm relying on you to do right by everyone I love. If selling is in their best interest to keep this dream going, so be it. That's more like um, selling their own dreams. No matter what you decide. 
I'm proud of you. I knew there was something special about you when I hired you to replace my grandson. You are the brightest spirit at the Funplex. And while we may not be blood... Oh boy, this feels really bit wrong. I'm happy to consider you part of my family. Ah, sweet. But I feel like um, something's bad going to happen because of it. Uh, you're the grandma I never had, Francine. Yeah, my serious thanks. Cabra the calm mom. Oh, you're the grandma I never had. I never knew my grandmothers. Either of them. They died when I was really young. I feel like you fill that role. You become the grandmother I never knew I had, Miss Francine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome home, Katie. You always be home here. With another deep sigh, she eases herself out of the chair. Now I'll take your suggestion and head on home. Well, for today, anyway. I'll be bright early here in the morning to hear how things went with the tsunami. I know you'll make the right decision. Good night, Katie. Be well. Make the right decision. Okay. Nope, still not keen to sell my dream. I'll try. No. Her keys can't be. Me. No, I'll. I'm not gonna sell everyone's dream. I know Naomi still wants to work at the Funplex. I just can't see it. If we sell out, well, I tried so hard. I've gone so far. But in the end, it doesn't even matter. That's what the old Katie was said. That everything's going to collapse on itself. So why get emotionally invested? But new Katie grabs onto what she has with both hands and does not let go. If Francie wants me to hear him out, fine. But seriously, doubts this will change my mind. Now, who do I want to take my this plus one? Beep beep. Beep beep, Katie. Uh, you want to come with my date? I'm your girl Friday, but I'm afraid you're not my type. My type being a USB compatible, okay? I sense you were in a deep, um, uh, state of deep ponderance and want to help. You were thinking of taking, of who to take to a meeting. Yeah, I mean, Percy's an obvious choice, but I'm sure he has some opinions on Deco's palace. True, true, as part of the Femplex family, Percy would be a good pick. But this is a business meeting, you might want to consider widening your options. Percy will support your decision either way. He clearly trusts you. True. Okay, then. Okay, so let's see. Gavin, he does business in the business way. True. Like Naomi, she can assess the quality of the games. What's the point? They're going to say, we're going to buy you out. Ashley has a guy for... I don't know about that. Queen Bee, yeah. Percy, he does know business and gaming because, you know, he does day trading. Good. And to you, he understands the social communities. Okay. Let's do Percy. Percy's been taking it easy since his heart attack, only making a few passes through Mopi a day, relaxing and casually playing other games in between. And except for how does he get his highest score each day? I don't know. I wave him over as he's walking away from around a Donkey Kong. Lovely Hello, day. love. Lovely day, isn't it? Lovely indeed, although it's about to get less lovely. I know you're not exactly an employee of the Funplex, even though you own a slice of it in so form of Mr. Moby's Magic Maze, but I could use your help. Deku and Nami wants me to meet and discuss a business venture. Hopefully a mutually beneficial one, but who knows. Stay see, rather serious that. Mm -hmm. And you like to tap my business acronym to help access whether he's serious or simply looking to scoop up a rival. I've already know he's looking for a rival, that's me, but I don't know if he's serious. Something like that, yes. Very well, I shall put my best business face on. I'd rather not wear a tie if it's all the same to you. I'm going in my hoodie. I think you can skip ties. I'd rather gather my stuff up, shall we? Don't make a big deal of this, don't make a big deal of this, don't make a big deal of this. We go there, we snicker at how awful the place is, tell Deco to shove it where it goes, and go home. That everything should be the way it is. It's going to be fine, it's going to be fine, and that's where I'm going to get Jinx. Uh, Piercy offers to drive us across town to Deco's palace. Contrary to the talk before, we don't exchange many words. Deep in thought, running through all the possibilities of what could happen, and I can't chase this feeling. Something is off. Even look at the glowing neon temple in the distance. My stomach knots and I feel uneasy. When we finally pull up, Valley takes a car and glitzy, blinking lights blind our eyes. Hesitantly, I look over at Percy. That smile reassures me that enough to continue onwards. This is for me, my friends, in the funplex. I got this. I pause momentarily, inhaling the cool air around me. And open the door. So what does it look like? 
Okay, this is not what I was expecting. I thought it would be like a big old casino lookalike. Deco's Palace. I actually been here before. I think my sixth birthday party was here. I barely remembered it, but I think I had fun. Maybe? But if entering as an adult, my first reaction is... Okay, my first reaction is, boy, that's a weird smell. A mix of chicken grease, beer, and sweaty kids. My second thought is, geez, it's noisy. Visually noisy is sound type noisy. All the chaos of the Vegas casino. A jumble of lights and bells and whiz bangs. Once we accumulated to the new environment, we were escorted in. Given the VIP royal value swipe cards. No tokens, no quarters, just a card at determinate points to spend. We got a little hour to kill before the meeting. Time to see what's up that place. Can't say I care much about the atmosphere of this place. It's hardly cozy, is it? I know I say I played my best in chaos and noise of an authentic arcade, but this this feels skewered in all different directions. It feels a bit too intense. He does seem pretty uneasy, ever since stepping through the doors. Hmm. Uh, I don't know, second up person. <laughs> no, I can't say that. Is this safe for you with your condition? Percy, are you doing okay? Hmm? Your heart. You only got out of the hospital a few weeks ago. Oh, Tosh, I'm fine. I doubt Deco's Palace can carve a few months of what's left of my life spun. I'd be more worried if Francine came along. you noticed, notice, have you? She's getting worse. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed. Probably for the best that we're here, in her stead. We'll probably do right for her, love. No worry. I suggest we split up, roam about a bit, scout it out. I'll study the games, you're welcome to join me. If not, I'll rejoin you later. Okay? Okay, some time to kill, but not that much time to kill. I'll need to be choosy. So what I need to check out while waiting for my dinner date with Destiny. Or Dekonami. Oh, I'm not ready to get a drink. Let's see what games they have. I decided to look on the games and see, like, actual games they have. Except for the whole place is full of slot machines. Slot machines? They're in different shapes and sizes and colors. None have the traditional one arm bayonet look to avoid running afoul of legal issues. But they're still slot machines. I thought this was like a, you know, a video game arcade, not a casino. Every game here has a single button to stop or wheel or color light to try to line up with dots or something. The really complex ones, three buttons. Hey, listen. Hold me above your head. Huh? Visual scan, silly. I'll look for games you might be familiar with. With a shrug, I host the phone above in the air. The flash goes off, then I resume looking at Iris seeing on my screen. Please enjoy this recorded music. Processing. Please wait. Enjoy this recorded music. Oh wait, let's skip the music. That didn't take long. Good high bandwidth public Wi-Fi in here to cl my cloud processors. I'm seeing lots of driving and shooting games. Easy for casual players to pick up and play. Over in the esports sections or dancing games and fists of discomfort. We got all those things too, but I'm not seeing any joysticks. Is a game divined by not having a particular input device? Well, no, not really. But I know most modern games are touch based, screen based, and so on. Eh, I don't know. It just doesn't feel like an arcade. Wow, a stick or two. Oh, I found something. Back of that section over there with the green lighting. Head that way. That way. I weed my way through the crowd past the endless color cycler ticket games, past crane games, past light stackers, past games based on popular game shows, to find Mr. Mopey's Magic Maze. Shh, here? Wait, it's only got one button and no joystick at all? It's researching. One moment. Curious, I wipe my car through the slot and push the button. And Mr. Mopey runs to the mage itself, or tries to anyway, before running head first to the monster dying. The machine spits out three measly tickets and suggests I wipe out for another try. What's the point in that? Mr. Mopey's Super Maze created in 2000. Shoot. A company bought the expired rights to Mr. Mopey brand and developed a game of chance with it. Well, shoot. That's weak. Uh, speaking of, there's a girl. A teenager puts her deco playing card on the cabinet and taps me on the shoulder, drawing my attention. What's up? Hey, hey, I'm calling next, okay? Yeah, whatever. Knock yourself out. Like the shirt, though. Thanks, thanks. I'm a master of this game, you know? The master. The key is to time when you push a button. 
You'll avoid the nasty that way. It's not great for tickets. No, no, not quite. But it's mopey. So that's cool, yeah? Old school. Represent. She extends a fist to me and awkwardly look at her for a second before realizing I'm supposed to have fist bump. I get to play a real Mo Mr. Mopey's maze. The real deal. Always wanted to. You should come to the Funplex. We got one. I'm the event coordinator down there, but I have to accompany a few tokens, and we also got a high score chaser who can offer tips. Tap phones with me, I'll send you the address. Seriously? Yeah, you're cool for an old person. Super cool. Seriously, old? Old? I'm barely 10 years older than this kid, but whatever. We clink phones, exchanging a business card via Bluetooth. You know, my crew used to go to this great little arcade on the other side of town, till Deco's palace bought it, and scraped all the games. Now it's all kids' stuff for the kiddies. My hopes for this business meeting now sinking. So, did he sell all the classic games? Nah, he scrapped them, strashed them, saw leftover mashed up bits of Mick pack behind the place in a dumpster. Man, it's, you know, it's sucks. shame. The way the old man always 86 is at unwanted games. Guess he doesn't want competitors getting their hands on them. No, sir. She, she gives a shrug. Can't say I like it, but what can you do? That's life. I mumble thank you and wander off. Bit days. <sighs> so, this won't become a mopey, has it? Sorry you had to see this for Percy. Tch, I'm plenty offended. To take all the mental leaps of dexterity to escape the maze of the game is fully. But I'm hardly angry. It's a bit silly to be angry at something as trivial as this. He can't purge a real mopey from the world. Even if he tries, we'll always have it. We'll always have it, seeing if they bought it from you. Until no further need of it, I suppose. Let's see, want us to put your urn inside the cabinet? Jeez, no. Won't we be honored to take for it after you're gone? Let's not think about that. Let's focus now. Yeah. Let's not think about that right now. Right now, you need Mopey and we need you. Let's focus on the now. Quite right, quite right. Here and now we're live and ready to fight for a funplex. So let's keep looking around for now. I think I had enough of the retro game, you know, for now. We're next. Sounds like a tournament, let's see. From the sound of it, there's a tournament running in the dedicated esports section near the back. I wandered through the games to join a crowd. Okay, I'll admit I'm being oppressed. They got no fewer than 10 of fist discomfort machines. All of them occupied by players in pro team jerseys and jackets. The crowd's red hot cheering for their heroes. As back and forth resource battle of the world's most popular fighting strategy game plays before them. Although the banner hanging above it does make me shudder. Deco's Palace presents the Choco Energy Max Power Crunch in the Pizza Yum Friday Night Fisting. When you have pizza on a bagel. See, see? Even the gamers know when the pizza's on the bagel. You can... Oh god, please, no. I haven't had one of those in weeks. Not since I started being able to afford real food. You just don't appreciate the sublime majesty of combining two of the greatest bread-related snack products into one hybrid masterpiece. Hang on. I sense a disturbance in the crowd. What the... was that? I call it hacks, you cheater. Rindra Kalorson. Two competitors step away from the game, start shouting, shoving each other. I hope this doesn't escalate. And now it's a full-on fight, like the actual awkward grapple and punch fight. Who knows this? Cheering teens teenager. Yeah, I kick his butt. He has the same logo as that girl. Don't take any of that from him. Same logo as a girl. And same logo. Destroy that. Wow, there's kids here. Finally, altercation detected. You want me to call emergency services? Deco's palace has security guards. They should be able to handle this. Two gamers both really wail at each other. One swing actually makes contact. Blood dripping from the down of the mouth. Uh, any second now. Except the people with the black shirts that have security printed across the sets just standing there. Let it happen. No one is doing anything to stop this. The crowd's eating it up, feeding the cut their energy. Only half a minute later, someone actually stops it. Much to the crowd's dismay, the two angry gamers are still cursing and kicking as they're finally pulled apart. Wow, tough crowd. So much for friendly competition nowadays. I don't think I can actually learn anything from this. I run clean events at the Funplex. I have zero tolerance for s salty jerks. Time to move on. Actually, the meeting is right around the corner. 
No more time to explore. Otherwise, I'll be drinking beer and feeling sorry for myself. After seeing uh, what Deco's palace has to offer, I'm sticking to the plan. The funplex has way more kind and caring spirit than this place. I don't actually see Deco embracing the ideals. Beep beep. Beep beep kitty, it is now 7 p.m. sharp. Deco Nami is waiting for you. Is that time already? Time sure flies when you're having, uh, fun? Investigation? Fun investigating? I quickly sent a text to Percy before nervously wringing my sweaty hands together. I'll let the sounds and sights of Deco's wash over me as I retreat deep within myself. Francie comes to mind, I remind myself what she told me on my first day. Everyone has a dream they're chasing. No doubt you'll find yours as well. It gives me a momentary respite and a smile. I know exactly what myth to be done. I'm going in there and do it. Well, we're in like the party room, I guess. Only ended up a wing a minute or two before I was re reunited with Percy. Without having introduced ourselves, the sass whoops in, anticipating our revival, and ushers us inside the restaurant. This place is so, there's so much blue and gold. We treat like royalty as they pull out our chairs for us, as we sit down at a reserved table. Amongst the families huddled around the ginormous plates of pizza and tenders, chicken tenders, we stick out like a sore thumb. An actual lining tablecloth drapes over our table, accompanied by a little fancy candles. To set the mood, I suppose. A nice bottle of champagne on ice in a cafe of cucumber or lime infused water also sits before us. Dekonami spares apparently spares no expense, at least not with his special guests. I suspect I ought to eat healthy, just to have a salad. Maybe have some grilled chicken. No cheesy breadsticks or anything of the sort. I think you ought to do most of the talking during the meeting, love. You run the stage, I'm merely one of your players. Okay, but if you see something you want to comment on, you jump on it. Got it? I value your opinion. Not sure how useful my opinions will be, given what I want is sort of opposite what this place provides. But you know exactly what they're going to say because it's a business. But I understand it's not really for me. An old man can't afford to yell a few clouds for long. Can't in not enough days in one life to waste on such nonsense. Maybe, but I still want you know how to f you feel, okay? Mm -hmm. Of course. Once again, the staff take care of our needs as our food is delivered promptly. Faster than any families sitting there who have been waiting for some time, judging by the expansive crayon work on the kids' placemats. Not surprisingly, we got a few side glances our way. But before any of us can chow down, the man of the hour arrives. And this is him? Jeez. You know, for a kid's place, he certainly drinks like he's owned a casino. Kitty lady. It's an honor to break bread with you. Ah, uh, yes. It's an honor to meet you as well, Dekonami. Ah, uh, likewise. Okay, so he's a bit of an over-the-top 19, you know, mob boss. Despite lacking a fedora. Clearly, he likes showing off his money. But still, he's an ordinary guy in an expensive suit. Why picture the Grand Poobah of Deco's palace? I picture more like, well, Hamza, I guess. That's a good description. He offers a simple smile and a nod of the head as we begin. It's a shame his fancy couldn't join us. I was looking forward to showing your sweet smile once more. But that said, I'm always meet to, happy to meet, uh, Percy Sinclair, good sir. Future Mr. Mopey's Magical Maze World Champion. Oh, retro, retro player. A dying art, really. I appreciate you coming along. I take it Francine has kept you up to speed and explained our prior meetings to you? You mean when she rejected you both times? Each time? Yes, she has. Yeah, she mentioned you wanted to buy the funplex and she politely declined. Always a courteous woman she is. Now, I don't feel I need to waste your time with the facts and figures illustrating why Deco's Palace is and always has been the premier family entertainment arcade. When you say it's a family entertainment arcade, you mean when you have games or, or like casino, which I'm pretty sure is gambling, or the fact that you just let, you know, bloody fights break out with no one intervening? Is that family friendly? I don't think so. Both of you are intimately familiar with the arcade industry. You know how things are. How they'll always be. We are the 800-pound gorilla. Okay. That's a big gorilla. Hmm. But that doesn't mean there is a room for smaller, more 
boutique affair such as a funplex. Boutique, he says. I should probably feel insulted by that. Let me explain. Frankly, the winds are changed are blowing. Small arcades are need to move on with the times or be swept aside. You're saying I should be swept aside. I want to help you evolve. What I like to propose is a change of ownership. Of course he says that. In return for a very generous offer pa compensation package, one friend Miss Francine can easily retire for the rest of her years. I would take over the ownership of Funplex to evolve it in its final form, Deco's Fun Zone. This is a cruddy business deal. What's a fun zone? Think about A fun this. zone is a new concept I've been trying at my smaller satellite locations. A best of both worlds scenario. Honestly, this funplex is simply too limited in size to host a full Deco's palace of, of fun, family, food, and excitement. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. To me, it is. Instead of installing a restaurant or bar, we simply focus on your strength. Your games. You become a game center rather than a palace. We just need to replace some of your outdated games, of course. Bring it up to speed with the standards that Deco's excellent palace is no form. You mean your little casino games. Overall, I think this would be a win for all. And he sits back, resting his hands on the knob of his cane, smiling away. Okay, I have questions. One, are you serious? Two, are you serious? And three, are you nuts? Okay, I have answers. Let's see if they match up. What would happen to the Funplex stuff? Your new management means new staffing. What about the staff we already have? Good, good. I firmly believe you have a long story career ahead of you in arcade management. I have nothing but good things about you from my various field scouts and contracts, contacts. So basically, your little spies. The fact that you leaned on my radar it all indicates your rising importance in the industry. You should be proud of that. But that doesn't answer my question. Okay, that doesn't answer my question. What about the others? Hmm. Well, Mr. Cooper is a catable accountant, so I'm certain he'd be welcome in the new facility. But what about Ashley and Naomi? But we can hash out the staffing later, after settling the bigger picture questions. So, he will get rid of Naomi and Ashley. How much can, can we have? Let's talk about creative control. I've been developing new sorts of arcade events, competitions, and other things to get people in the door. Will we be able to direct our own affairs like that, even under a change of ownership? Let me explain. Miss, Aunt, Miss Lady, obviously I value your expertise on these matters, and would be happy to consult you on your best direction of the fun zone. That's not answering the question. You're avoiding these things. You should be a politician. Hmm. It's a matter of branding and image. There are certain standards and practices you need to adopt in order to be truly part of the Deca family. Once you realize that, you'll understand more how we run these things. Capital. It's nothing too onerous. And really, you need to look at the big picture. The chance for growth and profit. But what about heart? Nothing about that. Don't worry about such petty little things now. Is it true you destroy all the games? I saw Mopey's Mooper maze earlier. Excellent. Uh, one of our top gamers was 30-45 demographic. Nostalgia is a powerful motivator, I found. Except it's nothing like Mr. Mopey's Magic Maze. Indeed, it's much better. You mean it's a lot worse. Is it true when you don't find a retro game, you simply destroy it? Not repair, not restore? Not even resell? You just scrape it? Certainly. Why would we need to keep an old relic around? Let me explain. Arcade games are not sacred treasures. They're comedies. Back in 19, uh, arcade owners, myself included, routinely junked or converted the games. Have to keep those earnings. Old machines are not welcome. All they do is eat up floor space. The arcade scene must move forward, evolving into new forms. Classic retro IP reborn as new games. True, nostalgia this. could earn a few points off those old games, but the newer redemption games earn 10 times as much. Why bother? Don't think so. I'm afraid I must disagree with any of that, Mr. Nami. The question is not one of earnings. You can make more money selling, say, refined uranium than you ever could run an arcade, if that's your only goal. The reason to operate arcade is to sustain a dream with what arcade can be. The reason that make it profitable is to be rewarded of your efforts in that regard. And the only reason that dream has shifted in the national subconscious towards a redemption game focus is because you force that issue. 
And I think you find the audience ready and willing to pay a premium for your high, extremely high quality retro games. The Funplex is proof of that. Excuse me. Well, that certainly got him down. Thank you for your opinion, Mr. Sinclair. But I think I had given my decades of experience in this industry. I know a bit more than you. As you like, good sir. Percy settled down, having never raised his voice before, simply making his point and moving on, barely hiding a smirk at Deco's raised ire. How about this? I saw a few players fighting out over at the tournament. <laughs> he laughs. Well, it is a fighting game, is it not? Yeah, it's supposed to be in the game, not real life. IRL. As in fighting each other with fists in real life. I take in my cracks security team intervened? Yeah, 20 minutes later. Eventually, not before blood was drawn. You understand. We take yeah. safety very seriously at Deco's Palace. I highly doubt that your security team was standing there. That includes safety of our security workers. They're instructed not to intervene until safety intervene. For all involved, I trust them not to make that call. And I'll note we have not a single legal action pending. Probably because you would shut them down with your own lawyers. That's all. That's all my questions. Excellent. I suggest we shake on it and set our various lawyers to the task of sorting out the specifics. Uh, hold on a second. I did not say I was into it. He rises to his feet, sending a hand bristling with shiny rings to shake mine. I assumed this was a definite no from word one, but it still feels like a no. Am I really going to shake that hand? I'm afraid I must respectfully decline. You know what? You know, you, we like to think it over. Let's do this. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid I have to decline. I purposely keep my hands at side rather than shaking hand. I'll say this. I appreciate it, but I must decline. I'll say this. You've been honest and forthright with me, and I appreciate that. Thank you for your gracious invitation this evening. However, I'm afraid this isn't the right direction for Funplex. We're just getting started. It'd be a shame to abandon our progress in favor of a buyout. If you like to maintain relations, we can discuss partnership opportunities at a future date, but for now, I respectfully must decline. Deco pauses, looking me once over before slowly lowering his hand. I can feel his eyes on me. It's obvious he's not happy with my answer, but we followed the instructions that kept it professional. There's nothing we can do but accept our answer. I see. I suppose I should thank you for your candor in return. It is difficult to find people in this industry willing to sh show respect to their elders. I'm not closing the door on this idea of partnership, mind you. But if you like to go alone for now, who am I getting in the way of that? As he rises up from his chair, he takes a deep breath in. He turns away for a split second before running back and looking me dead straight in the eyes. <sighs> What's he going to say this time? But be aware. If we are not partners, we must be rivals. I thought that was pretty much, you know, that. We were rivals from the beginning. We weren't friends before. It'll bring me no particular pleasure, but I'm afraid that I cannot allow a rival. I am obligated to bring the full weight of the palace to bear on you. Uh-huh, that's nice. Hopefully one day you'll realize the error you've made tonight. Mm, not really. I'm pretty sure I'm thinking I'll make the right choice. And as a sign of respect... Your personal offer to join my empire will remain open, so you can escape the inevitable fall of your little arcade. Once more, Deco returns sharply on his walking cane and walks away from the table. Lovely. Well, well, quite taffle, aren't you? I can admire that. Keeping your cool under fire is a key attribute, champions. Well, I wanted to say, you know, forget you and stuff. But I try to be professional. After all, he was professional being honest, so yeah, I was doing the same. He did the right thing. He kept the Funplex family together. Mopey, the real Mopey, will always have a home. Much obliged. Thank you for bringing me along. It's a pleasure to watch you work. Shall we return home? With Deco hosting us, we don't have anything to worry about. Paying the check and all. We drop a quick tip on the table for the waitstaff and quickly abandon ship. We scoot out the door and from here on, it's a short jaunt across town, back to home sweet home. I wonder if it's still open. How- Well, oh, you mean apartment. As I walk into my apartment, the sheer and utter exhaustion of the day hits me like a brick wall to the face. My adrenaline glands are tapped out, leaving me a dreamlike lethargy. In the middle of the words, I'm so tired. 
I can't help the size I stand there. And why is everything still like this? My body is too drained to move, reflecting how the evening events transpire. I realize that the entire day kicked my butt. I did my best not to make enemies. I'm guessing we made a powerful one anyway, despite my diplomatic efforts. As I continue to anxiety loop, replaying every moment in my head, something steals my attention. A shimmering being of hope and happiness. My best friend. Juniper. Well, she's looking okay. She's sitting on the couch scribbling away in a sketchbook, probably working on the designs for her freelance contracts. She's been so happy since leaving the office, and her joy intensifies upon noticing me standing in the room. So, how was work today? Well, it was... it was a day, certainly. The condensed version is that Dekonami wanted to buy the Funplex, and Francie asked me to go and negotiate. What? Deco? As in Deco's Palace Deco? The one and only. Whoa. Well, how'd that go? I gave him the thanks, but no thanks. Very politely. I mean, he still vowed to annihilate us, but at least he was sorta of nice and promised me a job after he destroys all a whole deer. Ooh. Yikes. Yikes indeed. But hey, that's a good thing. It means he's scared. He wouldn't have tried to woo you to the side if he wasn't worried about what the fun plus could become. Try to see the positive. I guess, but it's still worrying. Let's not stay in here and drum up a whole bunch of anxiety. That's not going to help with anything. I've got it. Why don't you take your minds off and binge watch some cartoons with me? Tempting, but another night, Juniper. I really need to get some sleep. Okay, but let me know if you need anything. I'm here for you. I smile back Juniper before retiring to bed. Hopefully, everything will go well, but I'm not sure. It feels like it's foreshadowing something. I lay in bed, eyes wide open, staring at the ceiling above me. After trying very ways of forcing myself to sleep. Nope. Not working. Not sleep. I hate insomnia. Once you start worrying about stuff, and you're unable to sleep. The worry wor feeds on itself. And you're actively stopping yourself from resting. A vicious cycle. I sigh heavily. Feeling the weight of my decision dragging me down. I hope I did the right thing tonight. My phone lights up as Iris sensors detect conversation. Katie, you want to chat? No, I want to sleep, but I can't. So, hey, would you enjoy some recorded music? Maybe something relaxing? I just can't shake this feeling like I'm standing on a priest, I don't know, right in front of this big, dark big hole. It's weird because I think I made the right call. But if I'm confident in that, why do I feel like I'm about to fall? Hmm. Based on your prior personality indicators and inputs, my therapy system suggests is fear of failure, based on years of prior examples. In short, you got a long family history of everything going wrong. All at once. Murphy's Law. So when things are going right, I'm expecting to fail, fail anyway. But worrying about it won't change the situation. Whether you sleep or not, it doesn't affect the outcome. So, my suggestion is to get some rest. Deal with problems as they come. She's right. I mean, intellectually, she, I know she's right. But knowing something is true and feeling it to be true, well, there are different things. Iris off. I'm awesome. Okay, but remember, you're a good person and deserve to be happy. Thanks, Iris. My phones go back to sleep. But I do not. Well, I'm also stop right here right now since basically we're, we got a lot more to go on. But this is all for part 12 of Arcade Spirits. So basically, yeah, it's been a, it's been something, all right. It's just man, I didn't expect this to happen, and I have no idea what's going to happen next. I really don't. So if you want to play this game for yourself without any spoilers later on, then please look in the description box below. You'll see a link that you go to his Steam game page. And remember, like, subscribe, share with all your friends. And I'll see you on my next video. Bye.